Part two of the real estate show, Brian Crabtree. You can find my personal page at housedog.com or search for homes and bypass me completely. Just get right into the home sale value, uh, home purchase information, finding mortgage information at therealestateexperts.com. The picture on your screen is the Mount Pleasant Post Office, city of 100 and what, 10,000 people. Um, I did a little research study the other day and I, I send out a lot of direct mail marketing to people in my database, people that know me, newsletters, that kind of thing. And I, I was wondering, I, I don't think these things are getting there very quickly. So I dropped it in the mailbox. I put a little note. It's the, the day I sent it. It took nearly a week to get a package three miles from my office where I'm sitting right now to Whipple Road between uh, Mathis Ferry and Long Point Road. Three miles, almost a week in today's United States Postal Service. So I go into the post office to check this out. I bring the letter in, I need to pick up some stamps and drop off some mail. And I went up to the lady that you see in the corner. I'm gonna put my mouse right here. This is probably, is there something wrong with me taking this photo? I don't know, probably I'm gonna get arrested, but okay. So I talked to this lady and she's obviously frustrated and, and I'm not gonna, I don't wanna beat her up because she's doing a job and probably every third person is complaining because if you'll notice there's only one person in the post office at the counter right now serving people. In a few minutes, there was two people. There's like six slots. So we have a real problem with the country and the way things operate now. And so this goes back to the cruise ship section that I was talking about in part one of the uh, real estate show this week with yours truly, Brian Crabtree, is that we, infrastructure wise in our area, we are way behind. Part of this is at a federal level by the U.S. Post Office, but also part of it is the result of just mismanagement. And so this post office takes uh, almost a week to get a package three miles down the road because they send the package to North Charleston out of Mount Pleasant to turn around and send it back to Mount Pleasant to send it out on the carrier to, to go to um, uh, the house that it was sent to. If it happened to be my house, because I want to see how long does this take? Right. So kind of the absurd image of the week, if you will. Let's go to something else. Oh, I forgot. We're going to talk in a minute about wholesaling property. Big new law in South Carolina about to change everything for folks in the wholesaling business. And I got to be honest, I kind of love it. Zillow has introduced a non-exclusive touring agreement in response to the NAR settlement. Um, I'm going to tell you what you can do if you want to get involved in this. You'd be nuts if you do. You can go on Zillow, pick out a house somebody has listed. And you can then sign up right there and they'll just kind of like, I don't know, tortiously interfere with buyer agency in South Carolina at the Zillow level and help you get a one week showing agency agreement with the agent. And then they'll send it to one of their Zillow agents that pays this enormous, I think it's like 40% fee. Folks, I got to be on, I, I got to tell you something. If you're on Zillow shopping for homes and you have a profile and your phone's ringing off the hook and real estate agents are driving you insane, stop shopping on Zillow, that's why. Uh, if you're on my website, no one is getting your data but me. I can see what you're looking at, I can add information, I can kinda, I mean, here's the thing, it doesn't have to be me, pick a real estate agent that's good. Pick somebody that's a good real estate agent and go and use their website, because we all have all the listings. Some websites are better than others, but when you're on my website, we're not selling your data to anybody. We're not giving 14 people your data to chase the heck out of you. Zillow is trying to get in front of the real estate agent, and when they do this, they drive up your cost because ultimately Zillow still needs the real estate agent to carry out the transaction. And so when you find a real estate agent on Zillow, that real estate agent is going to pay 40% or a even if they're not paying 40%, they're going to pay a big fee, which equates to about, I, I know one agent that tells me that they were paying almost everything they made to get Zillow business, so they canceled it. So if you want to be able to negotiate a better fee in this new era that we're walking into and have better service, don't find your agent on Zillow. Don't request information on Zillow. Don't click, don't log in on Zillow. Don't save homes on Zillow because when you do, your phone starts ringing insanely. Trust me on this. I, I hate it because sometimes I'll be looking at another market where I don't have multiple listing service or maybe I'm not even licensed and I'll be, make the mistake of being on Zillow and I'm trying to find the listing agent. It's nearly impossible to do 
on Zillow. Here's some news. Speaking of this $418 million um, real estate settlement where the National Association of Realtors have agreed to settle with the lawyers and the buyers that file the class action lawsuit for collusion on commissions. If you've not followed it, the realtors agree to pay $418 million and take the offer to pay buyer's agents off the multiple listing service. I was on Facebook looking around and here are yacht brokers. <laughs> now they're trying to go after the yacht brokers. So basically, uh, this is getting absurd. So if you've ever earned a commission for anything in your industry, apparently the new trend now, because the National Association of Realtors, I guess, sold us up the river, now every lawyer is going to sue for every commission of any commission industry, I guess. And now they're going after, hey, have you ever paid a boat commission or been a buyer and a boat commission was paid? Let us know and let's see if we can sue the yacht brokers, right? So this is a little bit like they have some legal jurisprudence in their argument that the Association of Yacht Brokers, the Association of Realtors colluded with all these companies that sell yachts or sell homes and kind of fixated the commission process. I get the argument. The argument is legitimate, but this has been going on for decades. And so I, I kind of think that since the Department of Justice until just recently hasn't brought up anything about all these different things, that this is sort of what consumers expect. And consumers, I guess out of this, should have always been able to know what everybody was getting paid up front, and now they will. So. I hope that's where this ends, but I suspect it won't be. Uh, House Bill 4754, South Carolina. Let's define wholesaling. Pardon me to look away for a minute. Wholesaling means having a contractual interest in purchasing the residential real estate from a property owner. So when you see all these people, I buy houses. I'll pay cash for your house. You know, get a, you know, and I do the guaranteed offer on YouTube, so I'm not beating anybody up for doing all this stuff. The problem is, that a bulk of these people are wholesaling out these contracts. So that means I would, I don't ever do this, but it, this is what, if I were wholesaling, this is what I would do. I'd also probably go to jail because it's now illegal. But let's say it was a year ago and I'm wholesaling property. I'm calling myself a wholesaler. I'll buy your house. I'll write an offer on your house that you agree to. You don't have to show it. You don't have to do anything as is, where it is right now, done, right? So let's say your house is worth $400,000. And you don't want to have to fix up anything. It needs twenty thousand worth of work. You got no cash. You lost your job. You need cash now. You got a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage. I'm going to pay you three hundred thousand. It's worth four hundred thousand. All fixed up and nice. You're going to get a hundred grand in cash, and off you go. Well, not exactly. What people didn't realize is that these wholesalers were some were good in explaining the process the right way, but a lot of them were being very shady or even illegal. I started to say criminal. I don't guess it was illegal to just misrepresent people. It was immoral. And then they would shop the contract and they would send it out and market this contract in their database, on a website, whatever, and advertise a property for sale they have a contract on they don't own. And so what would end up happening is that a lot of times the deal wouldn't close and the person got into a bigger mess because the wholesaler didn't perform on the contract because they couldn't buy, find anybody to buy it. So South Carolina has said, eh, no way, you can't have this anymore. Now you have to write a contract. Money has to exchange hands. You at least have to have an option contract or a, uh, a, a contract for purchase. Uh, you know, these, these have been around forever, decades. People would do a, I don't, it's not really an option contract. Uh, let's see what I'd call it. I'm going to call it a contract for deed. So a contract for deed is, um, where you write a contract, you hand someone money, thousand bucks, hundred thousand bucks, five thousand dollars, and then you go to a closing attorney and you close it. You pay the attorney a few hundred dollars, do a title search, you check the title, and you record this contract for deed. This is sort of like owner financing, except you don't have full control of the deed until you pay all the money. Then you have the deed, free and clear of the seller. The seller essentially is giving you a, a, a right, an equitable title to the property. And then you can go and advertise the property. To me, wholesaling has always been advertising for sale a property you don't own. And that's now illegal in South Carolina. Now, if you want to buy a property from someone like this, but you don't want to have to close and pay $300,000 and you want to be able to shop that property 
for 30 days or 90 days for your wholesale network of people. You've got to actually go to a closing. You've got to record the contract. You have to have an equitable interest or title to the property through owner financing or some other means. And then you get to sell the property at a closing to the new owner and the lien that the old owner that you're purchasing it from has on it gets paid off. And they get to keep the money you've given them for the right to. There has to be consideration. So you have to write the contract. You have to give the old owner that you're buying it from money. You have to do a title search, go to a closing, and then actually record this contract for deed. Then you have the right to advertise the property for sale because you have a recorded ownership interest in the property. What's been happening in the past, people just write up a contract, hold the contract in their hand, they don't go to closing, they don't do a title search, and they can just bail on the seller at any time they want. And they advertise a property that they don't own. The only way you can do that is if you have a listing agreement and you have a real estate license. This is great for real estate agents because now there will be fewer people because a lot of people don't have the money. They're not going to invest. And a lot of properties, the inventory problem that we've had in our market is a lot of properties never hit the retail market. They get wholesaled. And uh, these people, a lot of them keep them as cash flow properties. Now home sellers are going to have to either work with a legitimate buyer that has legitimate money or they're going to have to go to um, the market with a real estate agent and get retail for the property. I and mean, that's the only way this stuff's going to work. So I think this is a monumental, wonderful law. It takes a lot of the shady players out of the real estate business. And ultimately, it uh, it really helps, I think, make the real estate market more uh, of a uh, regulated in a good way. I don't, I'm not big on regulation, but when people are kind of in a wild, wild west one, running amok, that's a problem. I want to talk to you about a story that I think is amazing. I saw this on social media. It's our final story for today. The Gates of Dunes West. This is a, a, a community of townhomes organized as duplexes outside of the gate of Dunes West off Highway 41 in Mount Pleasant. This is, uh, in, in my regard, uh, this is the, the worst form of bad homeowners association management by some management company along the way who failed to pay the tax bill on the large lake behind the gates at Dunes West. Let me find a picture of this for you. Okay, we got them now. So here's what a Kingsgate townhome looks like. Let's just take a quick look here. So these are duplexes and behind about half of these, you can see that right there in the corner. Uh, if you look over there, you have a large lake. And apparently the story goes like this, that this large lake right here behind all of these townhomes is a piece of land. So most of these retention ponds is what they are. This it happens to be a lake, I suppose. I'm not sure what role it plays in retention because there's wetlands all around this property here. So the question is, you know, when you look at your homeowners association, uh, who owns what that doesn't belong to you? And a lot of times the homeowners uh, association retention ponds are individual lots and there's a perimeter that that lot has they're landlocked and there's a tax bill on them every year it might be sixty seven dollars right and so these uh, terrible some of these terrible management companies just forget to pay the tax bill they just whoops sorry <laughs> duh and so this particular pond where you see my arrow going around there that pond got sold at a tax auction some time ago someone has made a petition apparently found some way to ex access it so it's not landlocked and has determined with the city of Mount Pleasant that they can fill it in and build more homes on it. Now, mind you, I don't know how that's possible within the homeowners association because I would think Dunes West, which this is, even though it's outside of the gate, it's part of Dunes West, I would think Dunes West could stop it by saying the master deed and bylaws require Dunes West Homeowners Association to approve all building in the community. Now, there may be something I'm missing about the way that this particular section outside the gate is set up. Maybe it's not really Dunes West, but I think they have access to the amenities of Dunes West. So the developer of this lot is, is saying, I'm going to fill it in. I can't imagine this ever happens. And of course, all these people, I'm sorry to look away, but all these people, I don't know, what is that, 50 or 100 homes 
Uh, and this section over here was built by John Whelan, the final developer of Dunes West, where the bigger townhomes are. All of those people have bought waterfront, lakefront property. This is a big lake, probably, I don't know, 10 acres, five, five acres. And now someone wants to build on it. So back to the, uh, the original, this guy, John Hill, who I don't know, lives in the gates. I just got word today that the lake in Kingsgate will be filled in for more housing to build on it. How can that be? How can we stop it? What are your thoughts? And then, of course, um, she, this Kathleen says she has an email from the Homeowners Association president confirming my fears. So what someone has done is walked up to a tax sale, paid a couple hundred bucks, a thousand dollars for this lake, has done some research and figured out some loophole in the horizontal regime or the control of that lake so that they can actually build on this property. This is a tragedy. Uh, you know, I'm all in favor of people having private property rights and building, but I think at some point we have to be good stewards of land and good stewards of the community. I've joked that, you know, places like Mount Pleasant and Beaufort and Polly's Island, beautiful communities that, that have a lot of really natural history and natural beauty. All we need is, a, you know, another apartment complex, right? Uh, all we need is, is, is to fill in water and, and densely populate more homes because you could have a, 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 the size of this lake that I just showed you, you could have a road in the middle and you could put homes on both sides of it. And I, I just, I honestly find that to be a tragedy. Um, I don't know the law and I don't know the zoning on all of it that's going on. I've been trying to research it, but this goes to show you that when you buy property in a, in a neighborhood, you need to look at the forest behind it, the wetlands next to it, uh, the lake behind your property. Make sure that it's owned by the homeowners association. And as a homeowner in a homeowners association, make sure they're doing their job. If you need someone to do their job to help you get a mortgage, Crown Home Mortgage, just go to bcrabtree.crownhm.com. I'm helping folks right now with uh, you know no income documentation loans on investment properties. You know, the right loan to value ratio, the rates on those aren't horrible, uh, a little bit higher than what you get on a conventional mortgage, but not horrible. And then um, I can help you with selling your home. We need listings. We need listings to sell. We need sellable listings. Right now, the, the right price point. See if your home is in the right demand. Call me, 843 843- 343-4141 or visit my website for the, you know, some people don't want to talk. I get busy, but if you call me, I'm going to give you a much better analysis than the website will. We've got a new home valuation tool that I think is better than Zillow and Redfin. It's giving better pricing. I like the pricing better. Uh, sometimes I cringe when people go on my website and get a price. It's not always a perfect science. When you call me, it is. Uh, you want my page to contact me directly. You don't want to call. You want to email housedog.com. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.